please welcome to the stage the writer, director Owen Klein and actor David Zorgaji. It is such a fun pleasure to, to have a, a, a comedy um, film like this in our selection this year. So thank you so much for the film, thank you, Owen. Thank you. And um, I wanted to start, I mean, this film, uh, above all, I think, is a celebration of DIY culture and community. It's set in the world of sort of underground comic books, but really it, it could be film, it could be music, anything sort of DIY. And it's not just the love of the uh, artworks themselves, but uh, the, the, the criticism and so on. And I guess I wanted to start with your relationship to this community. Um, what was your starting point for the film? Is, is this something you grew up in, the DIY community of comic books? I, I... Oh. Euh, D'abord, merci. C'est vraiment une joie euh, de vous avoir et d'avoir une comédie euh, dans la sélection. Donc, merci pour cela. Ce film est avant tout donc une, une célébration hein, de, de la culture un peu bricolée, de la culture un peu marginale, contre-culture. Quelle est votre relation à cette communauté euh, d'artistes Est-ce que vous avez grandi un petit peu dans ce, dans ce monde-là uh, Yes, the, the growing up in New York, I was a part of a couple of DIY communities, as they called it. You know, um, 2000. Five to about 2010, I was very involved in both the sort of um, the, the comics community, the DIY comics community, and also um, as well the uh, music community in New York. And seeing punk bands play five bill shows, and uh, you know the whole attitude, I guess, towards DIY, at least the, the sort of aesthetic value system, is that no one, no artist is higher than any other, or you know, but. Um, But yeah, I, I think that definitely informed sort of the movie and the characters' values within the movie. You know what I mean? Uh, I feel like, but in a way, there he's trying to apply it to everything in his life, and it's sort of he's almost using it in, in sort of a self-destructive manner at a certain point. You know, at what what point does you know he's lashing inward as much as he's lashing outward with the self-destruction? But. Um, But yeah, no, I, I drew comics and I played in, you know, uh, sort of idiotic punk bands that were kind of more comedic and, you know, making fun of it a little bit. It was a little bit more provocative, I guess. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's sort of how I started. And with film, too, I think that same value system, you know, uh, it, you, you know, you look at old issues of the Cahier and Truffaut and Godard talking about, they were the first guys pointing to the Warner Brothers and MGM cartoons of, uh, you know, the Looney Tunes cartoons of Tex Avery, Frank Tashlin. These were, uh, you know, and they were seeing that as cinema. They were seeing it just at the same level as Renoir or anything else, you know what I mean? There's no ranking. So that definitely informed the film. Euh, ben oui, c'est vrai que ayant grandi à New York, j'ai été beaucoup, j'ai été dans deux communautés entre les années 2005 et 2010. J'étais effectivement très impliquée dans ce genre de communauté euh, à travers la BD et aussi dans, en musique. Et j'aime vraiment cette esthétique qui est une esthétique aussi de vie, qui dit que personne n'est personne n'est supérieur à, à quelqu'un d'autre. Euh, les gens ne sont pas, il n'y a pas de hiérarchie entre les personnes. Et donc de la même manière, il n'y a pas de hiérarchie dans la valeur entre mes personnages. Euh, ils ont ce mécanisme un petit peu d'autodestruction. Hein, voit bien euh, le, 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 leur, leur psychologie comme ça. Euh, moi, j'ai dessiné hein, de la BD et j'ai joué aussi dans des groupes de punk euh, un, peu, un peu débiles, euh, en partie par autodérision. C'était aussi une, une, une démarche d'autodérision. Euh, mais en tout cas, pour ce qui est du cinéma, euh, c'est vrai que c'est euh, Truffaut et Godard qui, les premiers, euh, ont, ont, ont parlé, ont, voulu, ont fait parler un petit peu des, des, des dessins animés, de la Warner, de Tex Avery, euh, les Looney Tunes. Et pour eux, c'était du cinéma, vraiment au même titre que, que du Renoir. Et, et pareil, ils ne mettaient pas de hiérarchie. Thank you. And I wanted to ask about the casting process because I think we have such this gorgeous gallery of faces on the screen um, that it's so wonderful to have at, at Cannes on the Quest set. And I wanted to ask you about how, do you, how you found your actors. I believe uh, they're, they're professionals. And then, of course, how you found your lead in Daniel. 
Alors évidemment, on va parler de la distribution parce que vous nous offrez une magnifique galerie de visages euh, qu'on est ravis d'avoir sur la croisette. Euh, ce sont des acteurs professionnels, mais est-ce que vous pouvez nous, euh, nous dire comment vous les avez euh, castés, euh, engagés et euh, aussi évidemment parler de votre acteur principal, Daniel Yes, well again, so it's, you know, back to sort of DIY, uh, you know, this movie, a lot of the characters in this movie were sort of designed for people in reach, people I knew, characters from my own life, you know, colorful ones. Uh, the, uh, uh, we eventually sort of found the right mix of actors and non-actors and brought in a casting director, uh, Jen Venditti, uh, who, casts all the Safdie's films, and uh, she's just incredible at spotting faces in New York, in the subway, this and that, and asking them, are you interested in performing, making these little videos of them? And you know, then we'd bring them in to read or to improvise. But a lot of the people in this movie uh, were already known. And again, it, it was sort of bespoke. It was customized for uh, specifically um, Barry, the uh, the the landlord, the uh, the uh, the uh, basement apartment, uh, that was for him. Uh, you know, I feel like it would have been very easy to cast someone a little more slovenly, but he has this kind of dapper, uh, gentlemanly quality that I think, you know, uh, his his classiness kind of shines right through the sweat and all that. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, and then bringing in Daniel into that mix, I feel like. Daniel, you know, uh, sent in a, a tape, uh, and he, he had been in a couple films I had seen, was just wonderful, and um, again, uh, he, you know, a lot of people read Robert when they would read the lines of Robert as this sort of petulant character and give him this sort of attitude, that sort of tood, as they call it in the States, as sort of a pejorative, but uh, Daniel came in and, and brought this other element, again, that sort of self-destructive self-loathing to the character that I think gave him all the pathos that I think that I was trying to evoke and that you remember you know that self-loathing as a teenager where you're just slashing outward as much as inward again yeah ah oui, effectivement, euh, c'était euh, un, un processus aussi, un petit peu donc du sur-mesure, euh, un peu bricolé, parce que j'ai écrit certains des rôles pour des gens que, que je connaissais, euh, des, des, des gens qui existent dans, autour de moi dans ma vie, hein, des gens assez euh, hauts en couleur, et au bout du compte, je trouve qu'on a un bon mélange d'acteurs professionnels et non professionnels. Euh, j'ai fait appel à une directrice de casting qui est formidable, qui euh, fait les, les castings sur les, les films des frères Safdie, et euh, elle a, ce, elle a ce, vraiment ce talent pour repérer les gens dans le métro euh, et leur demander si ça les intéresse, de... de de faire une petite vidéo et puis ensuite on peut les faire venir pour faire des lectures et des petites impros euh, mais il y a aussi des rôles vraiment que j'avais écrits sur mesure par exemple le rôle de Barry qui joue le propriétaire qui a un petit peu ce côté euh, gentleman euh, malgré euh, la transpiration euh, et euh, quant à Daniel <rire> I think Miles is here, who I designed the character for entirely. I met Miles in a video store when he was 11 years old. Miles, do you want to come up? Just come up and take a bow, yeah. But um, I, I met this kid, he was 11 years old and came into a video store I was working in uh, and with his babysitter and rented uh, Hour of the Wolf by Ingmar Bergman. And I looked at his babysitter and said, am I allowed to rent this to him? Anyway, we, pretty soon later, I, I said I, I had started to write a project and, that, uh, and we started to work on your character and design. So his is the most designed specifically for customized, yeah. Alors donc pour revenir à Daniel, hein, il a envoyé une vidéo. Moi je l'avais vu dans quelques films et je l'aimais beaucoup. Et, euh, et, et on a beaucoup des, des jeunes, des, des hommes qui ont auditionné pour ce rôle euh, de Robert avaient un côté un petit peu arrogant, un petit peu euh, qui, qui, qui se comportait de façon comme ça un peu effrontée. Et moi ce que je voulais et que Daniel a apporté, c'était vraiment ce côté un peu cette haine de soi, euh, cette, ce côté autodestructeur qui apportait le pathos que je recherchais pour le personnage. Et donc on a dans la le personnage qui a inspiré Miles, euh, que j'ai rencontré quand je travaillais dans un, un magasin de, de BD, et, euh, dans un magasin, euh, et euh, un, qui a un jour, euh, un jeune de 11 ans, a voulu euh, louer un film de Bergman, le, le Hour of the Wolf, euh, l'heure du loup. Euh, 
Euh, et donc, j'ai demandé si je pouvais euh, effectivement le louer à cette personne. Et voilà, donc vraiment là, c'est un rôle que j'ai écrit totalement d'après euh, cette personne qui était dans ma vie. And Daniel, it's, 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 you carry the film a lot. You're in almost any scene. How was it for you? How did you prepare? Did you, did you also have a background in DIY or is this something new for you? Alors Daniel, vous portez vraiment le film sur, les épa sur vos épaules. Vous êtes de tous les plans. Euh, comment vous êtes-vous préparé à ce rôle I just auditioned and I had no experience really with like comics and anything of that culture. Um, I guess we just like rehearsed for a few weeks and we both had ideas of the character that we wanted to like explore and I don't know, I thought we just sort of did it together rather than me preparing alone or I don't and now know. Daniel draws beautifully. You didn't draw before this oh, well, movie. Yeah. Uh, you know, the character is a lefty by design, you know. He's not meant to be the devil or anything, but you, <laughs> uh, he does. And Daniel is a righty, but he now you started on set drawing with your left hand. Do you remember that? I remember that. And yeah, you're excellent, excellent left-handed artist. Yeah. Well, it started because Owen was a lefty and he wanted to, like, use his hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was the hand model. I was doing the inking of the, yeah. Alors euh, oui, euh, effectivement, quand j'ai passé le, le casting, euh, j'avais aucune expérience de ce monde-là, de ce milieu. Je ne connais rien de cette euh, culture. Ça vient vraiment des répétitions qu'on a faites euh, pendant plusieurs semaines euh, à partir de notre idée euh, du personnage. Donc c'est un travail qu'on a fait euh, main dans la main, on peut dire. Euh, Owen ajoute que Daniel dessine très bien et qu'il s'est extrêmement bien fondu euh, dans, dans ce personnage parce que euh, le personnage de Robert est gaucher alors que euh, Daniel est, est droitier. Et d'un seul coup, il s'est mis un petit peu à, à dessiner... Euh, de, de, de la main gauche à force de, de répéter ça mais euh, comme c'était Owen euh, le, le personnage en fait est, est gaucher parce que c'est euh, Owen euh, est gaucher et qu'il est double urmain sur le, sur le film Questions from the audience please raise your hand and we have a microphone down here this one black t-shirt couple down here Bongiorno um, Bongiorno My question for you is uh, Much of the movie uh, uses uh, close-ups, and I'm wondering what the creative decision was be behind that. Uh, maybe you could talk about the cinematography. Uh, was that more Sean Price William? Was that more you? Was that like a mixing, melting pot of both of you creatively? Il y a beaucoup de gros plans dans le film. Euh, donc, est-ce que vous pouvez nous parler du travail sur la photo? Est-ce que c'était votre idée, ou est-ce que vous avez... c'était aussi l'idée de Sean Price William, le chef opérateur? Yeah, I mean, I'd spent so long with the script and a lot of the moments. And small interactions between the characters again were so kind of uh, microscopic that you sort of needed to get a little bit closer. Also, it just you know I, I wanted it to be kind of uh, warts and all, as we call it in the states, uh, you know, in that regard. But yes, Sean Price Williams, uh, you know, he's uh, a big fan of the close up, and uh, he always wants to go as far in as possible. We like to ride things on the 32 lens, and uh, I guess. Yeah, that decision, it's also the, the Mike Lee films, the early television plays that he did, and uh, we're just, it, it, there's a harshness to that, that, and, uh, you know, it also, it, it allows the faces and the little expressions and muscle gestures to sort of tell the story as much as any other weird detail. Euh, oui, euh, effectivement, j'ai passé beaucoup de temps sur le scénario et donc euh, à peaufiner des micro-détails, euh, des moments microscopiques. Et ça, c'est vraiment le, le, le gros plan qui peut le, le capturer le mieux. Et euh, Sean Price Williams est aussi, lui, euh, fan euh, du gros plan. Il aime aller le plus loin possible hein, dans, dans cette recherche-là. Et euh, ça, ça rappelle aussi ce qu'il a, qu a fait sur les... les, les la captation, enfin les pièces de Mike Lee qui est passée à la, à la télévision, ce qui a été fait, euh, ça permet, ce gros plan, ça permet une certaine dureté et, euh, et ça donne au, sur les visages, en fait, ce sont les micro-expressions qui vont raconter l'histoire plus que, plus que le reste, finalement. Allô Ah. Uh, so, first of all, congratulations for being here. Thank you, because it was very funny and wholesome. And my question is about uh, the naive optimism of your protagonist. Uh, Romain Gary, a French novelist, said, there is no desperate art. Uh, des despair is a lack of talent. 
So do you agree with this sentence? Do you think art always has to do with some kind of optimism, even when we are talking about maybe tortured artists? Alors, félicitations pour ce film. Euh, euh, je voudrais parler de l'optimisme naïf de votre personnage. Romain Gary disait, il n'y a pas d'art désespéré, le désespoir trahit un manque de talent. Est-ce que vous pensez donc qu'effectivement, l'art doit donner de l'optimisme ou être optimiste malgré le fait que les personnages sont, ou que les artistes sont torturés Uh, that's a tough one. I mean, I, I have to process the quote. Uh, <laughs> but um, I would say, yeah, in terms of despair and, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I think, a lot. you know, you think about all the great painters and artists that, that painted such beautiful things that uh, cut their ear off or uh, shot themselves in cornfields. But, um, it's, it, you know, th there is a certain uh, positive attitude and seeing the beauty in things, even if you're a bit uh, whacked out. But I do think that that the character of, of uh, Robert sort of uh, sees that. You know, a lot of the early comics uh, that I, I love and appreciate, you know, the pre-code pre co horror comics uh, specifically, but, you know, 50s and before, um, gruesome horror comics, war comics, uh, this kind of thing, uh, were all drawn by guys uh, coming out of both the depression and the war who were totally warped by those things, you know, and that shows in the details and in the art, you know, for just cheap, cranked out genre comics, you know, and, uh, and they're that those things manifest as beauty, as grotesque. Uh, anyway, I'll be, I'll be thinking about that quote. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you. Alors, euh, c'est pas évident hein, comme question. Euh, c'est vrai qu'on voit, on voit beaucoup de peintres qui, qui, pour, qui ont peint d'extrêmement beaux tableaux euh, et euh, bah, voilà, on connaît l'histoire de, de se couper l'oreille et de se tirer une balle dans un champ de maïs. Mais euh, y a, moi, je trouve qu'effectivement, il y a une certaine classe à voir euh, le beau, euh, même quand soi-même, on, euh, on est un peu, euh, un peu déglingué de l'intérieur. Et on voit, euh, moi, j'adore les bandes dessinées d'horreur des années 50 qui sont vraiment très gore avec beaucoup d'éléments de, de guerre qui étaient dessinés par des artistes qui eux-mêmes avaient, avaient ça en eux, cette, ce côté très sombre. Euh, et donc, ça se manifeste par une une beauté, euh, effectivement, et, et ce sens du, du grotesque. Mais je vais continuer à réfléchir à votre citation. I also think, in, in a way, uh, the character, you know, in looking up, so up close at all those uh, Wallace's separations of color, you know, in some way he's trying to decode his soul in some way, and he sees some struggle in that or something, you know, even if it's kind of a little bit crude. It's something, it has something to do with the guy who did it, you know, unconsciously so. Oui, et on voit quand le personnage de Robert regarde de très très près la, la séparation des couleurs euh, qui, a, qui a été faite par Wallace, on, on sent qu'il est en train d'essayer de décoder euh, son âme euh, et que comme si euh, derrière ça, on sentait euh, son, son, ses conflits euh, intérieurs et finalement ça, ça parle de lui euh, d'une certaine manière. Oui, euh, d'abord merci pour ce film qui est très beau. Et je vais poser cette question donc en français. J'ai été marqué par deux, deux choses, ces deux scènes, du, celle du début et celle de la fin, qui sont des moments importants dans le film, où, euh, disons qu'au moment où les mentors euh, du héros euh, doivent leur, lui transmettre un savoir, finalement, euh, cette transmission n'a pas lieu car il survient un drame, comme s'il était impossible... Euh, <coughs> finalement de transmettre un savoir directement, mais il fallait passer euh, par les drames de la vie. Et en ce sens-là, est-ce que, est que ça a été une volonté de votre part de, de montrer ça, qu'on n'apprend rien par les autres finalement Uh, well, I was struck by uh, two, the, the two scenes, the, 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 the beginning and the end, because it seems like uh, when the mentors have to pass on their knowledge, uh, the, this transmission is aborted somehow. Um, so uh, d did you mean to say that it's impossible to um, pass on uh, directly uh, some knowledge uh, and that uh, you need to uh, go through some dramas of life and you don't learn anything from other people? Well, I think he does learn something from the first mentor. I think in a way that is the catalyst for the whole movie, that lesson, you know what I mean? That uh, it's not about craft, who cares about these life drawings? This is not, these don't have any, 
any point of view, you know what I mean? We, I want to see your brain process what you're seeing and filter it through your own imagination. I think that lesson is is uh, one that stays with him and and uh, that kind of mutates in him and coalesces and grows into something completely completely different. But um, uh, I, I wanted to bookend the film with with drawing lessons, sort of in in like a vertigo kind of way, where you have you know you have the the mentor that he strives to be, the sort of substitute teacher that he finds. And it's almost like a complete failure uh, to sort of uh, give him. He, in fact, the, the lesson that Wallace gives him at the end is is completely contrary to the one at the beginning. It's that who cares about your personal style? You don't matter. No one's an artist. It's about craft. It's about struggle. You know what I mean? It's entirely, which is you know, uh, the statement and the the ideas of of basically a non-artist. You know, he talks about drawing, making art as if it's coal mining, you know? Uh, but um, uh, yeah, it's bookended, yes, by both a, a lesson and a crash. Euh, en fait, il apprend quelque chose hein, de son premier mentor. C'est même ce qui va être le moteur de, de, du personnage dans tout le film. Quand son, quand son mentor lui dit qu'il veut voir euh, euh, à travers son dessin ce qui se passe dans, dans sa tête. Hein. Donc ça, c'est une leçon qu'il garde en lui pendant tout le, tout le film. Et oui, j'avais envie que le film commence et se termine avec une scène comme ça, avec une leçon de dessin. Euh, et ce prof de substitution qu'il a à la fin, Wallace, euh, lui donne une leçon qui est totalement contraire à celle qui était euh, du début, euh, en disant que personne n'est artiste et qu'en fait tout est une affaire de technique. Euh, et lui, il en parle comme si c'était euh, comme du fait d'aller à, à la mine. Euh, et donc j'aimais bien ce, 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 ce jeu de leçons contradictoires donc, au début et fin de film. Other question. I did want to ask um, about. Oh, we have one question. Do we have one? Oh, oh yes. No, 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 no. This is probably better. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I loved the film as a student of both film and animation. I loved that there is a true um, inner struggle to just try and. You're, you're clearly trying to reach this place in your head, but you don't know how to get to it, right? So I, I really related to that and the protagonist in the film. So my question is, being that um, you see there's this sort of condescending view of cartooning and illustration through the lens of the outside world, whether it be from the parents or from the school or from the lawyers, like, do you, is that why you chose the cartoony kind of style for the comics, and was it, it was an intentional style versus something like, um, like a, a, a Frank Miller, where it's more gritty and and a bit more realistic. You wanted to intentionally make it look a little bit more um, less sophisticated. I'll put it that way, um, so that way you can try and say, no, this is at the same level. This is at the same bar. Um, That's my Alors, euh, étant donné qu'on sent vraiment le regard assez condescendant hein, de, de, de la société, en tout, ou en tout cas au moins de l'école et des parents, euh, sur le fait de faire de la BD, est-ce que le style que vous avez choisi du, du dessin euh, et justement permet de, de refléter ça, d'avoir ce dessin qui est assez peu sophistiqué, pas très esthétisant Jersey City, rules. Thank God you. Bless Jersey City. Thank you. Lowe's, the Lowe's Theater. That's the old Jersey yes. City has the oldest <laughs> Lowe's Theater. It was from like the, the, the teens or the 20s. Yeah. It's yeah. unbelievable. And they play old horror movies around Christmas time. They have an organist. It's like, it's a church. Yeah. Yes. It's a church. It's, 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 it's honestly like a. a Alors, <laughs> Merci d'avoir remis en scène le New Jersey, la ville de Jersey City, qui a un, un cinéma extrêmement vieux et qui date des années 20, qui montre des vieux films d'horreur. Donc, merci. So now the, the question. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I certainly choosing. I, when I was uh, about 10 or 11, all I wanted to do was to be a comic strip artist and have something run in the paper next to the Peanuts, which was still going at the time. And um, to me, yeah, the cartooning to me entirely and how I learned about 
you know, creating characters, and I wanted to come up with some sort of great character like that, um, was, uh, you know, these cartooning charts where they give you a different set of eyes, you know, dot eyes or circle eyes, you know, oval, Bugs Bunny type eyes, different noses and mouths and sort of combining and putting them together. So the sort of lowbrow cartooning, humoristic, or humor cartooning, you know, uh, that sort of exaggerative, both, both, I chose it for both for, for its sort of lowbrow outsider quality because people don't, treat, you know, uh, wacky kind of cartooning seriously in some way. They don't see it as surrealism, which is what it is in a way, you know? But, um, yeah, he's exa and it's also just a good metaphor for just sort of exaggerating the forms around him. But, um, but yeah, no, people, like I said, you know, people don't treat cartooning with a capital C seriously. So it was a better metaphor than uh, say, yeah, you say Frank Miller or uh, Mobius or something like that that's more intricate and um, more, that can be, is more treated more seriously. I also wanna say, you know, um, in terms of cartoonists I know, it's a very awkward term, both cartoon, you know, if you someone says, oh, what do you do? And you say, I'm a cartoonist. You know, you might as well be saying you're like a whoopee cushion salesman, or I, I don't know. But, uh, you know, it, it's if, especially if you do something more detailed, you know what I mean? So, and then there we have the word, you know, uh, it's a uh, reactionary term that we came up with, a graphic novel, which is sort of supposed to sort of class it up a bit. And uh, people don't like that either, because it sounds totally pretentious. So, anyway, that's why I chose that in particular. What kind of animation do you do? I'll ask you later. <laughs> euh, alors moi, en fait, quand j'avais 10 11 ans, mon rêve, c'était de, de, de faire du dessin humoristique dans les journaux, de faire des vignettes de comic strip, euh, un peu comme les Peanuts, euh, et, euh, et avoir comme ça créé ce, un personnage emblématique euh, qui reste comme ça. Euh, et et d'avoir ce côté humoristique et d'exagérer de, un petit peu, tout, un petit peu outré. Euh, mais ça, c'est un genre qui n'est pas traité très sérieusement et qui n'est pas traité comme si c'était en fait, ça le vrai réalisme. Euh, parce qu'on s'intéresse plus à des gens comme Moebius ou, euh, ou Frank Miller. Et d'ailleurs, euh, voilà, le, le terme cartooniste ne euh, fait, fait pas très sérieux en fait, quand on en parle euh, en, en anglais. Hein. Euh, et on a donné un terme un peu pompeux qui est euh, auteur de romans graphiques, mais on aime, qui ça fait plus classe, mais en fait, on n'aime pas forcément ça non plus parce que ça fait justement assez prétentieux. Well, thank you so much for your questions and thank you, Daniel and Owen, for coming to Cannes.